Kyle comes off to me as very tight. Like it, it feels like his handling of his quarterbacks is is very tight. Like he wants things done a very specific way. But when you see, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo come in and have some of the success that he did, didn't throw a ton of touchdowns or anything like that, but just the way he was very efficient, moving the rock. I mean, he was number one in a lot of different statistical to statistical categories uh, after those first five starts, like most yards per throw, most yards per drive, most points per drive, most points, like all that stuff was like, he was like number one, right? Do you think that Kyle, and we saw that something very similar with Brock Purdy as well, like top of the league and a lot of different stats. The the more Kyle kind of gets his hand on and then he starts to throw stuff at them, because that's what you just mentioned, kind of throwing more at them after, do you think that kind of like hurts his quarterbacks a little bit? Because it seems like the longer they're with him, the tighter he starts to get. And then the more it's like, gosh, I, I can't really mess up. And then, uh, and then, and then okay, he's throwing all this at me. Do you think that kind of slows them down a little bit? As opposed to just, hey, just go out there and play. Because, yeah, that Jimmy G you were talking about, he came in half a playbook, doesn't even really know this stuff as much. But, man, he's firing. He he looks so confident. He starts to look he like just gave a beat, stuff. man. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it, it's it, it was like the Josh thing that we talked about in Buffalo. You know, when Josh came into the league his first year, he was trying to be something that he wasn't always, um, and and being this pocket passer and, and playing up tight. And then finally, year two, he loosened up, and then he just starts playing the game that he knows how to play. And then now we see the athlete and the quarterback that he's become in the NFL. Um, I think, yeah, you got to have, you got to. You got to give it, give a, uh, unravel the reins a little bit, give them a little bit more from time to time and let them go with it. And then when they screw up, okay, now I got to reel it back in just a little bit. But, um, you know, with Jimmy, it was interesting because it, it was like, it was, I don't feel like he ever got enough consistency within the offense because he played, then he was hurt, then he plays, go to the Super Bowl, then he's hurt, then they go, he plays, he gets hurt a little bit, then they go to the NFC Championship game. And he's hurt again. It's like, shit, there's no consistency. I, you know, it'd be tough for, for anybody to go bounce up and down from that. Um, but you, you put the right pieces to the puzzle, which they have offensively. Now it's just little things. It's coming down to the little things with these guys with, you know, routes and blocking. And I feel like a lot of the plays are dialed up in good situations for them to be successful, especially us watching the film every, every fall. Like I feel like they're put in a good situation a lot. There's just little things that are holding them back here and there. And, um, and eventually it's been the death of the 49ers over the last three to four years. Um, but ideally I would like to see the quarterbacks come out and, and not be held back. Like you got to just let them go and figure out who they are. Otherwise, they're going to play up tight. And like you said, once they do unravel and, they, and they let, he just lets them go and they start making the mistake, now they're scared to make the mistakes because they don't know what's going to happen. Because Trey's on Brock's ass, Brock's on Trey's ass, Sam, whatever. Everybody's in the mix instead of just sticking with one dude and rolling with it and seeing what happens. I, I think some of that is going on right now. I I read my guy Grant Cohn. He puts out an article and – yeah, he's kind of been giving his perspective on the quarterback situation. And one thing that he mentioned was yeah, a lot of check downs from these guys. And he wondered, and I actually don't want to butcher his his uh, quote. So let me actually screenshot it, and I'll tell you exactly what he said here. All right. But he said, I wonder if the nature of this competition will cause both quarterbacks to throw lots of short passes so the media will praise them simply for completing throws. If that's the case, this competition will produce two losers. And essentially what he's saying is, you know, you, you can't play it safe right now. We just got a, we got a bunch of dink and dunkers on this damn team. Well, <laughs> I know I've been hearing that. But, oh, shout out to, shout out to, who, is it, who, who put that out? Was it Ryan that put that out there? And he, he's yeah. catching flack from everybody here and there. And, and yeah, we talked about that. Like, yeah, yeah, Kurt Warner, Kurt yeah, Warner commented on it. Kurt Warner, like everybody got into it. We talked about it a little bit on, on the, the pod with, with you and Peacock, but um, yeah, like everybody's definition of dink and dunk is going to be different. That would be the dink and dunk right there. Um, definition, in my opinion, right? You're going to bypass maybe some throws cause you're, you're nervous to screw up. Don't want 
to mess up and coach say, ah, oh, screw it. So-and-so is getting the reps. Like you're not in college anymore. You know, you're not competing with five other guys. Like the reality is, is there's, is there is two guys right now in training camp. One or the other is going to end up taking the one reps. Brandon Allen, I mean, he might get tossed into air because I, apparently, you know, I, from what I've heard is he's throwing the shit out of the ball. But again, Brandon Allen probably doesn't have nothing to lose. So why not show what you got? Air that damn thing out. What's your, what's your famous quote? Air the. Air that hoe out. Yeah, why not? Like literally, let it rip. He got you the have guys nothing. that can do it. I mean, we're because I'm and, talking about and, 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 and like those guys can. Those guys can. They can. They can make those shows. They can do those things that you know some people say. Oh, Jimmy wasn't capable of doing. They do have stronger arms than Jimmy. They have stronger arms than Brock. And if everything is said as it is right now, we're apparently coming out of the Nor- Niners organization that Brock Purdy's the starter going into Week One, given the fact that he's healthy. The hell, he got to lose. Come out and throw the ball. Um, have fun with it. it. Show, hey, okay, now, like, this is really your opportunity because Brock is gone for the next two and a half, three months. This is your opportunity to try and get a leg up on him. He does have the game experience. Trace was cut short, obviously. Brock has the game experience, and he showed that he can make enough throws in the game to obviously lead the offense, given what – look what they did with his – when he was in the game. But – you have nothing to lose. You might as well air it out. You might as well use the whole offense and use all the athletes that you got on the field. And if you screw up, hey, take a step back. You get another play. You get another shot at it. There's going to be practice tomorrow or, or whenever the next OTA practice is. And you're going to get another shot at it. Coach isn't cutting your ass tomorrow because you decided to throw the deep ball. Now, if that wasn't even a part of the progression and that's just a runoff route and you make stupid throws, that's different. But if you got a shot play and you're not taking shots, there's a reason why coach is dialing up the shot play or calling it on the script in practice is because he usually wants to see the ball get pushed down the field and see what guys can do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Trey Lance in practice, he did complete a vertically pushing route. I believe it was to Brandon Knight, which is weird. Cause it's like, Oh, you know, Sam Donald got all the reps with the ones, but then you have Trey Lance throwing a 40 yard pass, uh, completion to Brandon Knight, who's clearly a, you know, First team, uh, first receiver. team receiver, yeah. 